today uh, we will discuss uh, about the composition of natural rubber latex so the latex normally we know the rubber is available cis polyisoprene and non rubber substances today we are going to discuss what are the properties of rubber available in natural rubber latex and what are the effects of non rubbers on the uh, natural rubber here uh, other than the natural rubber which is cis 14 polyisoprene which we saw in the previous slide there are several other rubbers so those are gaiuli rubber siara rubber panama rubber india rubber logo silk rubber right so those are the other types of other trees that we can extract cis 14 polyisoprene other than the natural rubber so you can see those here right how this natural rubber is produced inside the plants so it it is starts from carbon dioxide and water right so it follows the photosynthetic route and finally according to this book so it has predicted that it has mentioned that this should be the road to produce rubber here you will see how natural rubber is tapped from the heavier brazilian cis trees and how it is collected and the initial stages of factory process to produce this type of sheets so today we are going to focus on the composition of this latex so here you can see the constituents in the latex so you can see rubber water other than the rubber and water you can see proteins resins lipids minerals or ash and carbohydrates so these are the main components in the natural rubber latex so we'll see what are the quantities as a percentage of the weight so it's around 30 to 40 in some references and 25 to 35% of rubber available in latex according to some other references however this could be the range and protein content can be 1 to 1.5% like that you can see the lipids so there are a little amount of ash and around 1% of uh, carbohydrates so here the lipid content is about 3% so this is the rubber constituent and these are the non rubber constituents so today we are going to talk about the properties of rubber and what are the effects of these non rubbers on the properties of rubber okay if you centrifuge the natural rubber latex so you will see there are three distinct phases so on top you can see the rubber phase then serum phase and at the bottom that is this is called the bottom fraction which contains the lutoids which are small rubber particles so this is the rubber and you can see the non rubber substances here as well as you can see some amount of non rubbers even in the rubber phase okay so you will see the arrangement or the structure of rubber particles because natural rubber is a polymer it is 1/4 cis polyisoprene so these are available in rubber particles so this is the structure of rubber particle you can see cis polyisoprene which is rubber inside this rubber particle available inside this rubber particle so it is covered with a phospholipid layer the adjacent layer to the rubber is a phospholipid layer the most outer cover of this rubber particle is protein so this is the top view of this rubber particle you can see phospholipids and the outer layer which is protein so if we have take a cross, cross section of this you can see here phospholipid particles phospholipids molecules and protein molecules so those are interconnected with polyisoprene and those are interconnected with rubber molecules like this so you can see how hydrogen bonds are formed in between proteins and in between 
uh, phospholipids through omega terminal and alpha terminals right so this is the structure of rubber particle so inside the rubber particle you can see this polymer which is a polymer of 2 methyl 1 3 butadiene which is 1 4 cis polyisoprene so uh, here these are the cis polyisoprene 1 4 cis polyisoprene which is inside the rubber particle and so i earlier told that even in the rubber phase there are non-rubber substances so these are the non-rubber substances which are available in the rubber particles maybe the protein and phospholipids so those are those are the non-rubbers available in rubber phase of the latex right okay then we'll see what are the properties of natural rubber so it is a high molecular weight polymer so it has therefore it has a high viscosity as well as it has high green strength so the strength itself is very high that is called the green strength and so it has high hot tie strength as well as you can see here there is an unsaturation double bonds so we can perform vulcanization means cross-linking rubber with sulfur like cross-linking agents because of the high molecular weight and the ability of cross-linking so it has good strain stress properties stress strain properties uh, and also it has good hardness which is around 40 IRHD international rubber hardness decrease IRHD and also it has good abrasion properties and there are many more properties okay now we will focus on the effects of non-rubber so we'll see first the lipids so the lipid content is around 1 to 3.5 percent weight, weight weight basis so it depends on the clonal factors right so like different factors basically clone you can see neutral lipids 54 percent glycolipids 33 percent and phospholipids around 14 percent within this 1 to 3.5 percent overall lipid content right so some lipids are adsorbed onto the rubber particles we earlier saw that adsorbed lipid layer right in the rubber particles and uh, some are available in the serum right so first we will see what are neutral lipids available in the latex so you can see triglycerides esters and phenolic compounds uh, Linoleic, oleic, steric like uh, fatty acids, carotenoids, polyunsaturated fatty acids, monoglycerides, diglycerides, and fatty alcohols. And there are those neutral lipids have different functions. So, for example, if we take tocotrienols plus phenolic compounds, so they can act as antioxidants, which can prevent the rubber from the oxidation while increasing the shelf life. And also free fatty acids and steric acids so they can act as activators in the vulcanization process and also they can participate in the strain induced crystallization while increasing the strength at this stretch so those are good properties and also there are free fatty acids steric linoleic oleic so they can make soaps with uh, cations like ammonia so we deliberately add ammonium compounds to preserve the latex so they can make some soaps with these free fatty acids so when soaps are there so they can increase the negative charges of the latex so we will discuss those things in the next lectures also so they can improve the uh, stability so then polyunsaturated fatty acids for example linolenic so that can act as a plasticizer and however it do not contribute the strain induced crystallization and means it doesn't participate in the strength enhancement then next the glycolipids so you can see there are four types of glycolipids 
so the content can vary from 0.3% to 1% so you can see uh, digalactosyl diglyceride sterile glucoside like uh, different types of glycolipids here and next type of lipid is the phospholipid so it is a polylipid and content is below 0.6 percent based on the weight so major components of the phospholipids are phosphatidylcholine and lysophosphatidylcholine so you can see phosphatidylcholine here and the minor minor phospholipids are these phosphatidyl ethanolamine phosphatidyl inositol lysophosphatidyl inositol and metal phosphatidates and phosphatidic acid so however you can see the phospholipids here so the best thing is the phospholipids can hydrolyze and release phosphate ions to the latex so while the phosphate ions are available in the latex they can join with the divalent metal ions like calcium and magnesium which cause the latex destabilization but however the uh, phospholipids comes through the hydrolyzation of these phospholipids they can precipitate those calcium and magnesium like uh, divalent metal ions and increase the stability of the latex and you can see this uh, choline and ethanol amine and phosphatidic acids can act as antioxidants also then you will see the proteins so mainly you can see the proteins um, adsorbed onto the uh, rubber particles so those are the proteins here you can see the proteins so 50 percent of proteins are water soluble while 20 percent of pro 25 percent of proteins are adsorbed onto the rubber particles and also the balance is available in the bottom fraction with lutoids so main proteins are alpha globulin which contains low sulfur content so these proteins uh pi or the we call it as the isolated point is 4.5 actually this is a ph value where the net charge is zero in the system means at room temperature if we can reduce the ph of the latex up to 4.5 you can coagulate the latex other than the alpha globulin you can see heavy so which has antifungal properties so that is a good thing for latex other than that you can see the rubber transferase protein which is an enzyme which participates in the synthesis of 1,4-cis polyisoprene the natural rubber here are the effects of proteins so these proteins have negative charges so therefore they can stabilize the latex because latex prefers negative charges more negative charges means the latex is more stable means it can behave as a liquid without coagulating to form a solid rubber right so protein layer covers 84 percent of the surface area of rubber particles right and it also provides 14 percent of negative charges from the total negative charges so it has a big effect and these proteins affect the tensile properties of rubber products and they have antioxidant properties so you can say glutathione protein so they have antioxidant properties which prevents the rubber from the oxidation and also it can promote the storage hardening which is not preferred in the industry because when we store the rubber products the hardness of the products can increase due to the proteins availability and sometimes we have to put more energy to masticate hard rubber right so this is not a good properties however these are good properties other than those the protein is a polar molecule so it can absorb moisture so the moisture content of rubber can increase due to the availability of protein and also it can increase the modulus creep behavior and stress relaxation behavior 
Further, it can improve the silica like materials dispersion in the latex or latex or rubber matrix. As well as they can perform as cross linking sites as these rubber proteins, the protein molecules or the protein particles are very small, so they can behave as reinforcing fillers. However, uh, disadvantageously they some of the proteins can cause some allergies to human when we use those rubber products for example heavy in b1 so they can cause allergies to human then the next one is the amino acids so that is also kind of polar substance in the latex so you can see 0.1 percent of free amino acids present in the latex and 80% is available in the cytoplasmic serum of the latex. So these are some examples for amino acids, glutamic, alanine and aspartic acids. So they can have some effects on the rubber properties. Other than those major amino acids, there are minor. You can see glycine, lysine, thrion, like minor amino acid. So what are the properties? of those amino acids so they can behave as anti-aging materials means they can increase the shelf life of the rubber cysteine alanine asparagine and phenylalanine so those are the amino acids which can increase the anti-aging properties and some amino acids which are histidine cysteine and glutamic acid and glutamine so they can act as antioxidants in rubber and alanine asparagine and cysteine so they can also perform as antioxidants so see how these uh, non-rubbers affect the properties of rubber products so carbohydrates the next one and inositols so this is called cubrachitol right so the largest single non-rubber in the latex so this is approximately one percent of the total weight so the melting point of this carbohydrate is around 180 190 like that in celsius so we can use this cubrachitol to make some drugs which are antifungal right so what are the what is the major sugar in this latex so it is sucrose other than the sucrose, you can see galactose, glucose, fructose, raffinose and 2-pentose like uh, carbohydrates. So, what will happen if glucose is available? So, glucose can reduce the viscosity of unvulcanized rubber and sometimes it can discolor the vulcanized products. So, those are negative effects and sulfur accelerator ratio uh, can be reduced and it will affect the physical properties negatively and also the uh, glucose uh, can generate volatile fatty acids because of the microorganisms activity on that glucose they can produce different types of volatile fatty acids so those are not good for the latex and you can see you can you can you can calculate the succinic to malic acid ratio uh, to measure the latex quality then right if the ratio is below 0 0.6 then you can see the latex is good it has not uh, spoiled right so it is a well preserved latex however if the value is greater than 0 0.6 the latex is a spoiled one right means a poorly preserved one and normally the industry prefer the low VFA uh, latex because it gives the good physical properties the ash content which are the minerals available in the latex depends on the soil factors right sometimes in sri lanka you can see mathale area kagol area right you can see a high content of uh, magnesium and calcium in soil so then uh, the latex will contain more calcium and uh, magnesium so that's why soil factors affect and also the clone and weather and fertilizer if you use more uh, fertilizers having calcium so the latex will have more calcium like that so high magnesium or calcium contents can uh, 
reduce the latex stability because uh, they can increase the volatile fatty acid content of the latex and it can destabilize the latex automatically that is called pre-coagulation and we will discuss those things in later lectures so you will see the phosphates um, in the in, in, in phosphate as the as an unrubber uh, so it can also increase the stability because it gives some negative charges as well as it can precipitate the magnesium as magnesium phosphate if calcium is available calcium can be precipitated as the calcium phosphate so while reducing the magnesium content by phosphate so it will increase the stability of the latex so then the ratio of magnesium to phosphate is very much important but other than those you can see copper manganese and iron like pro oxidants in the latex so if copper is available right it can oxidize the rubber and it can catalyze the oxidation of rubber and but for that the copper should be free but what will happen if we if the copper is bonded to other substance it cannot perform or it cannot catalyze the oxidation reaction of rubber which is not good for rubber why because oxid oxidized rubber do cannot show good physical properties so if microorganisms are available in the latex so they can act on the copper bonded substances and release the copper to the latex then the copper will be a free material free iron so again this copper can act as or copper can catalyze the oxidation of rubber if the copper is available in the latex as a free material it can coagulate the latex right then the final one the volatile matter so main main volatile matter is the moisture because we know the latex is a water water based material right so it is an stable emulsion uh, which is available in the water water is the continuous phase of the latex so some amount of moisture can be available in rubber so then moisture can be considered as a volatile matter other than the moisture you will see the formic acid acetic acid and propionic acid so these acids can be formed by the microbial activity on the sugars in the latex so however so you can see formic acetic and propionic which are volatile so moisture content is affected by the hydrophilic substances yes we discussed if the protein is available as it is polar so it can absorb moisture so like that those things will affect ultimately the physical and chemical properties of the natural rubber products so moisture can promote the microbial activity in latex and it can cause the destabilization of latex while producing volatile fatty acids if volatile fatty acids are there it can reduce the physical properties right so sometimes enzymatic degradations are occurring due to that so it can produce uh, malodors due to propionic butanoic and valeric like acids so those are the odorant compounds so then you will see some malodors you will feel some malodors uh, in latex so like that there are different effects of non rubbers on the latex and ultimately in the rubber products so those are the things i wanted to discuss today for the first time right so then you will understand there are different effects of non rubbers on the physical properties and chemical properties and liquid properties of natural rubber latex so studying these uh, effects of non rubbers on these those properties liquid properties and physical properties and raw rubber properties of rubber is very much important because uh, if we take 100 grams of rubber you will see all together if we if we, if we try, take consider dry rubber so you will see around uh, one to three percent is uh, non-rubbers so if we take 100 we will see 97 percent 98 percent actual cis polyisoprene but 
balance is the non robust so then it can affect the ultimate properties so therefore it is very much important to know the effects of non rubbers on the uh, rubber products properties so we will meet uh, 